Okay, some people have their cameras on. Hello, everyone. So we're going to get started now. For those who don't know me, my name is Ezine Alpha, and I am the founder of Beauty in Lagos. Um, anyone not familiar with the brand Beauty in Lagos, BIL, it's a platform I started as a blog back in 2012. And over the past 10 years, it's involved into an ever-expanding digital beauty resource and agency. We have a website that's literally a resource for all things beauty if you live in Nigeria, and we are now expanding into the rest of Africa. So our vision at BIL is to be the voice for beauty and wellness on the African continent, amplify the Nigerian beauty industry and help brands grow. So we regularly host events like this. Um, this is our first ever virtual event. Our events are usually physical, like our TGI free manicures event, uh, in conversation with Beauty in Lagos event. Um, you can read more about this on the platform. So this is our first ever virtual event. And today we're launching a new trademark initiative called Meet Your Match. So the purpose of this um, series that we're launching is to educate our audience on how to use complexion products. Um, we're talking foundation, concealer, color correctors, powder, anything you put on your skin. We're going to introduce our speakers shortly, but before we, I do that, just some housekeeping. It, we literally have one hour and we waited five minutes for everyone to log in and get comfortable. So we're saving 10 to 15 minutes towards the end for questions and answers. But once again, thank you every single person for coming and being a part of this this morning. So I'm going to introduce our host. Um, she's a beauty entrepreneur and the head makeup artist at Doran Beauty. I believe she's here. So Theo, you can turn your camera on, unmute yourself and we can get going. Okay. Hi everybody, my name is Theodora. Isn't it has already um, done the introduction. Um, we barely have well, one hour, so I'm gonna go straight right into it. When you're picking your foundation, there's five things that you need to know. The first thing is to know your skin on the tone. Second thing is to know your skin type. The third thing is to know your skin condition. The fourth thing is to ask yourself, what, what kind of finish do I like? Um, and the last thing is, what's the best way to apply this product? These are things you should always find out or know before you actually go into the store. So we'll start with your skin on the tone. Um, what is your skin undertone? In plain, plain English, your skin undertone is basically like that color that you see beneath the surface of your skin. Generally, skin tones are, uh, are, are generally classified into warm, neutral, cool. Um, for most African women, we tend to be more neutral or warm. Your yellow undertone, your olive undertone, your red undertone, and sometimes even gray undertone. Um, one of the easiest ways and easiest tricks to know what your skin on the tone is, your jewelry. And by jewelry, I mean, if you find that yellow gold, for instance, suits you, you're most likely either like yellow or, or a um, olive on the tone. If you find that when you wear silver or white gold, your skin pops more, you're really more under the cool tones. Yeah, and that is, that is really it. Again, undertone is not, am I yellow? If you are light skin, then you're yellow undertone. If you're dark skin, then you're red undertone. That's not what it is. It's literally like the co color on which your shade is built on. And um, I think that's where a lot of people struggle with in terms of finding foundations. You'll find a foundation that kind of suits you. And you can see if you swatch it against your skin, it looks almost exactly on your skin. But by the time you blend it in, it looks red. It looks pinkish. It looks bluish. You know, and that's because the undertone is off. Another thing to note when it comes to undertone is that your skin tone tends to change also with climate conditions. I'll give you an example. If you are on holiday over the summer, you're most likely to be warmer. So you most likely be like two or one or two shades darker. If you're on holiday over like winter, you're going to get brighter and your tone might change. So you always need to note that when you're buying products or when you're shopping for makeup products. So always consider where you live. We live in Nigeria. I'm not sure where every other person lives. Consider the, the climate that you're living and you know that, okay, when I'm in Nigeria, even if I'm holiday in the winter, I know that 
Nigeria is always hot. Always consider that when you're buying um, um, foundation. Another way to, to figure out your skin tone um, is your veins. Pinch yourself where your veins are most visible. If your veins are green, uh, it means you're most likely yellow on tone, you're most likely olive on tone. If your veins are red, you're more likely like a uh, red on tone, still under the, still under warm tones. If your veins are like bluish, yeah, you go Ezine and Co. <laughs> Funny enough, as nice as Ezine is, she is really, 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 really yellow. Um, so yeah, that's for undertones. If you have any questions, please write them. Undertones are very, very tricky to to explain, but I think in, in really with your like that jewelry thing always works for me. So your skin type. So let me go through the skin types. You have dry skin, you have oily skin, and you have combination skin. Um, if you have dry skin, it means that you need to start looking for foundations, hydrating foundations with hydrating formulas. What are the key words? to um, look out for when you, you're buying a foundation. If you have dry skin, look for hydrating, look for dewy, look for luminous. Once you see those keywords, you would, you would you know that, okay, this is my people. When you have oily skin, automatically, your advice to your keywords are matte, semi-matte, long wearing, long lasting. Those products usually cater to people who have oily skin. Now I have like combination oil, combination to oily skin and I still like my luminous base. I do not like a matte finish for anything. But that's a, that's a personal prefer, preference. And that's why one of the, one of the um, things to consider before buying a foundation that I listed earlier is what type of finish I like. Because it's also important that you also buy what you like. Then the third thing is skin condition. By skin condition, I mean, so I'll give an example. Right now, I'm currently dealing with acne scarring. I have a bit of discoloration there. So I just have a concealer on there. Now, but why is that important to consider when you're picking a foundation? When you look for foundations that say full coverage. You want to be able to use a foundation that covers up all blemishes, scarring, discoloration, what, what have you. So you have like light coverage, medium coverage, full coverage in terms of like how you, like layman's English, how you want to cover your face, literally. Please just also note that foundation or makeup does not cover pimples. There are tricks in the game that you can use to appear, to, to reduce the appearance of a, a pimple, but anything that comes up over your skin, your foundation will not immediately hide it. It might reduce the appearance of it, but it will not hide it completely. What your foundation or concealer can do is cover up dark spots. So when it comes to discoloration, hyperpigmentation, that's what it does. Um, that was my pre preferred finish. Some people are like, I don't care whether my skin is oily, whether my skin is dry. I want to look matte. I don't want to have to go out. If I'm going out to a party, I don't want to have to touch up at all. I don't want to even look like this. It's, I don't want to even look shiny at all, you know? So that means you're going for bad foundations. And then some people are like, no, I want to have like skin-like, you know, skin-like finish. I want it to be dewy. I want to look like my skin is healthy and glowy. And then you're looking for, you know, your so you're more likely going to lean towards like again your keywords are dewy, velvet, you know, silky foundations. Um, that's it for preferred finish. And lastly, your technique. I'll give an, a practical analogy. You've gone to the store. You want to know your skin tone. You know your skin type. You have a list of 10, 15 foundations. You started to take out, and now you're down to what three or two, end up with one or two brands that you like, you may not get the best results out of that product if you don't know how to use it, if your technique is wrong. So, you know, online they will tell you use a, a damp beauty blender. I, I prefer to always use um, foundation brushes and these are my three go-to foundation brushes. And Really, this brush is the only one that is actually a foundation brush. This is a highlighter brush, and this is a, um, what is this brush actually? I don't remember what this brush is, but I use them 
both for foundation. This is called Sephora 79 brush, and it's actually a contour brush. Uh, this is a Sephora brush, it's Sephora 64, and this is a foundation, pro, pro foundation brush. Um, yeah. And then this is a Real Techniques, I do not remember what this, okay, this is Real Techniques 103, 103. Um, when you're buying foundation brushes, it's always important to buy synthetic brushes. Forget like any natural bristles. They will leave streaks on your face. So you want to find a brush that has like synthetic and it's very, very light, very, very light. So you want to apply um, foundation like that with this, in this motion, this kind of brushes. Um, obviously, if you have like, you're trying to cover up scarring, same brush, you're trying to cover up scarring, or you have acne, your motion changes. Your motion becomes like tap, 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 especially around the areas you're trying to cover. Um, so yeah, that's it for technique. So I think I've basi basically covered up, um, and I have some tips that I wrote down for when you, you're buying a foundation. Never been a hurry to buy foundation. Try on the shades and then go out, go about your day. Look at how it works, how it oxidizes. Look at how it is in regular sunlight, daylight. Every time you go to a makeup store, a professional makeup store, they have extremely good lighting that will alter whatever, what the product looks like on your face. So if I'm like in a Sephora or like a Miss or whatever store that has amazing lighting, I literally, I would advise my friends, oh yeah, just watch it on the side of your face or down the center of your face. Those are the two areas to, um, to swatch your product. And I say, most people, I see most people doing this and I do that too. But the problem with only swatching on this side of the, your face is that most people tend to be darker around, this, this, um, around the perimeter of their faces. So when you swatch here and then you buy the product, you will go home, and then try to use the product here and you will look almost as you gray. So you want to always swatch here and swatch down the center of your face. If it matches, that's a thumbs up. Let's look for a brand that offers a variety of shades for black people. Another thing I may see, another mistake I see people making is trying to figure out what the shade is from the bottle. So I say, oh, this looks like my color. Oh, oh this looks like my color. Let me just buy it without swatching it first. Whilst it's okay for you to say, oh, this might be my color, not this is my color. Always open it. I always like to swatch at the back of my palm with my fingers. I'll show it to you. And I'll tell you why I do this. What happens when you put product behind you, you at, the back, uh, um, at the back of your palm is that it actually warms up the foundation. Always remember to use your finger to warm it up first before applying it into your skin. Warm it up first, with a few seconds, and then you swatch. Like I said, don't only swatch here. When you swatch here, swatch in the center of your face as well. It'll give you the exact um, shade that you're looking for. Are there times where you will not find your shade? Even after you've shortly set all these brands, you know the your undertone, you know your skin finish, you look for a brand that caters to whether oily skin, you found you, they have very your yellow undertone, they have a variety of yellow undertones. You've done all of this. But it seems like even with this brand, you can't seem to find your color. What do you do? For me, I generally find that I do not find colors that match me. I always tend, when I use this, this brand, for instance, I have to always mix Tao and Macau together to get my color. By mixing, I don't necessarily mean mixing the two shades all in one and getting it. What I do is, Put this in the center of my face where it seems to work. So under my eyes, my forehead, under my eyes, my chin, and then I blend it all out with a slightly darker shade. I find that I get the best results that way. So let me use this. So this is long content, I do nine. So I use my brush. Just swirl it around the back of my palm before I actually apply it. 
Can I get a minute, please? So I'm first dabbing, 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 dabbing. And before I like go back and forth, or swipes rather, in swipe motion. And this way you actually save products. You don't have to pack on. And it kind of gives you like that airbrush finish. Can't really see what I'm doing because I'm actually looking at the, my camera. Thank you. Thank you. So again, because I find that most black women are dark around the um, perimeter of their face, you may need to look, for, you may need to use something slightly darker. Again, that is my own self, that's what I find. To give me the perfect finish. And then I go in with, um, let's try the Niles one. Warm it up, warm it up. And then blend all around. Some people like to mix it in, you know, mix the foundations, the shades on the plate or the back of their, up, up their palm first before they apply, which is fine. I do that too sometimes. So this is usually my go to. Um, so, Another question I get a lot is, where are you matching your face to? So I understand that again, we black women, we have dark necks, our chest is lighter, our hands is lighter, you know. And when I read like articles of like, you know, professional makeup artists abroad, they'll tell you, oh, you know what, match it to your jawline, blend it down into your neck a little bit, just in case. And I'm just like, you haven't seen Nigerian women move because we really be having like one shade here, another shade here, another shade here, and another shade here. So what's the best way to, um, what's the best um, way to match, or what part of your body do you match your uh, face to? I know this sounds ridiculous, but I tend to match my face, not into my neck or my chest, to either my, to the back of my palm or like just my hands. Or oh, that's what I do for most of my clients. Again, I'm speaking as a makeup artist. And I'm telling you like the, I'm telling you, so if someone says, ah, my hand is really dark. So you see, there's no, there's no real law to this type of things, but I'm telling you from what I've experienced with Nigerian women or with most of my clients here is that the face, I've seen women at the neck and they're not pregnant. Then their neck is a completely different color. Their face and their neck is a completely different color to their chest. So it's like, you know, how do you work it? If I'm working on a client that has that type of situation and she's, she's like all covered up to her hands, like she's wearing a long sleeve dress or shirt or whatever, I can't match it to her hand, I match it to her neck. But you want something that you're gonna be using every day you're going to buy it and it's going to be your kids, it's going to be your bathroom, you want to reach out to it whenever. So you're going to have to either match your face to your chest or your face to the back of your palms. Your prep, even with dry skin, is so almost, I don't even know if it's almost as more important than the foundation, but it's as important. So one of my recent ways of uh, priming the face, especially with people that have oily or combination skin, is to always use a loose powder Literally just take a brush. I prefer to use a brush than a beauty blender. Dab into your um, loose powder, take off the excess, excess and just press into the skin in all the oil, your excessive oily areas before you then apply your foundation. Stay away from flats, you know, the flat foundation brushes. Most of the times those flat foundation brushes, they were foundation. Most of the time, stay away from them. If you have oily skin, Stay away from those kind of things. Yes, thank you. So these kind of brushes. I use this to apply moisturizer or eye creams or whatever, or serums. And then I use my massage into the skin. 
All right, let's start running through these questions because we're coming. So let me start from the first question. Is it possible for your undertone to change? So the main factors that affect um, skin tone alteration is usually weather. You'll go slightly darker in the summer and you go slightly lighter in cooler regions. Hi, can you hear me now? Hi, Ado. Hi, Theo, thank you. Um, so my question is, I find that when I put makeup on my face, um, it doesn't fully cover. I have dark spots on my skin and like some blemishes mm -hmm. and stuff. So I don't know what foundation or concealers you would recommend. I think in case you may not necessarily be, it may not, may not necessarily be that there's anything wrong with the brand that you're using. It might be your technique. Okay. Um, um, if you have hyperpigmentation or any form of discoloration, sometimes yeah. is not enough. Sometimes we need to color correct because what color correcting does is that it's it's it counters the um so if you don't color correct you notice that after a while once you've added a foundation after a few hours almost start seeing that the 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 the, the color is seeping through all that layer all the layers of foundation your application is also very important if you're trying to cover or hide a a, a patch or whatever. You always want to use this motion. Okay. If you take a concealer brush and do this to mm. cover, you're literally just wasting your product. It's not doing anything. Mm. You always want to do this and with a little more pressure over the areas that you have um, blemishes or discoloration or anything like that. If you're not going your foundation and you're doing this, mm -hmm. You're going to end up taking off. If you notice, when I do this motion, I do it after I've done this. Mm. Yeah? yeah. And literally, when I when I um, use the swipe motion, I'm just blending. I will not. So, if I need coverage, I not use a swipe motion here. I would use a swipe motion literally just to blend. Yeah? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. <laughs> so my question is, I cannot find my match. I have tried every brand, every possible brand out there. Well, no, not every possible brand, but like I've gone to Fenty, Bobby Brown, Lancome. What's the other one? L'Oreal. I've done Rimmel. I've done Maybelline. I just feel like my 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 match doesn't exist. In terms of finding your match, I said earlier that. I personally believe that I can't find, like I typically never, ever, ever like any, just using one shade. I feel like with you, that may be a problem for you as well. You may need to mix your shades to get the perfect match. And that's not a bad thing. So are you guys ever going to do like a physical medium match? Like, are you going to be able to go into a store and be matched and then buy the foundation? Because that would be great. <laughs> Absolutely. The plan was to have a physical <laughs> event, but because of everything going on, we've had to come virtual. But the actual thing is to do it in store where you have a professional, try it out for yourself and actually purchase some products. So everyone here is subscribed to the newsletter. If you haven't subscribed, um, please do so. And so you can stay updated with the next session in this in this series. But, okay, so next person, Oye, if you can unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you for this. Um, so I, my question was, I think it's twofold. One, what um, Nigerian brands, if you tried them, which ones you would recommend, especially for the oily, blemish, have hyperpigmentation, have everything? You said you had a second question. What's the other part of the question? Um, I think it was twofold already in that Nigerian brands you recommend and specifically for someone with my condition. Okay. Um, in terms of the Nigerian brands that I, I use, I'm going to be very honest with you. I don't really use any um, in terms of foundation. Um, so I can't really answer Nigerian brands. I have reached out for the Nuba Beauty. I quite like it. Um, I haven't tried. I want to try Yanga Beauty and Beauty by AD. Those are the two products on my radar that I'm trying. I'm going to try on next. So I can't really give you concrete or real advice on those on any. Nigerian brands right now in terms of foundation, yeah. Okay, I guess I don't think we have any more questions. Um, 
so we'll ref, we can wrap this up. So thank you so much to every single one of you for joining us this Saturday morning for this. I hope this was useful. Once this shuts down, we are going to issue everyone a survey, um, a really quick survey. If you can just give us your feedback, that would be amazing. It will help us plan the next one. Um, and you would receive information about the next session. If you are here on this live, you will be added to the our beauty club, which is our newsletter, and you'll be notified about any other session. Thank you so much, Theo, for this. This has been amazing. The Saturday is literally a makeup artist Monday. So I really, <laughs> I really appreciate this. And thank you so much, everyone. See you at our next session. Bye.